welcome to another video. Today we're talking about the new moon in Gemini happening May 30th, 2022. Um, but you can watch it anytime you want, right? New moon in Gemini will happen every year. Maybe you'll find this next year. It'll be great. Um, look, after digging more into this new moon, I have to say to you to go watch also the weekly energy video because I feel like it explains a lot of this sort of um, passionate debate potential that will occur for sure. Um, there's a lot of karmic energy this week and especially around this new moon in Gemini. Um, Gemini is an air sign. It's all about ideas and our thoughts and this new moon will remind us how important those things are. It is important to reflect on and to be aware of how you think. Um, we are not our ideas but the action we take as a result of our ideas. So in, the, in that video I just made of, of for the weekly energy of this week, where the, when this, full moon, this new moon is happening, sorry, addresses all of that. It addresses all of that. You have to go watch it. I'll link it. I'll link it here or here. It's in one of these corners. Um, so what can you do with the new moon? I like to take every new moon as an opportunity to just like hit the reset button and start a new cycle. So knowing that our thoughts and our ideas are on the mind, you know, it's happening in nine, nine degrees Gemini. And I keep telling you guys that every new moon and full moon to like look up where, which house in your astrology chart, astro chart, your natal chart, your natal birth chart, is ruled by the house that we're the the sign that we're talking about so gemini where, where which house does gemini rule for you so you can look into that that's how they read the horoscopes if i mean write the horoscopes if you say like how such and such event will affect a capricorn it's because they sort of like know where gemini is based on if information but it could be your ascendant too um but anyway, so it's a, um, it's a reset. And so the house that it's in could be an area that you may choose to focus on. But some general ideas for how to use the energy of the new moon would be to talk. Remember two weeks ago, we, I told you guys to like listen, or sorry, to l practice talking about your ideas, practice expressing your ideas. It's important that we know how we think about what we think. Do you think about it in such a way where you're like, oh, I better not say anything about that. That's not going to be well received. Or do we feel free enough in our ideas, in the way that we think, in our mode of expression to express? There could be blocks there, but maybe not. Um, Anyway, this new moon in Gemini is a great time for socializing. You can meditate and relax your brain. Gemini is the fastest intellectual, so it's very speedy. <laughs> it's very speedy. And you know how ideas are. They can really get into people's heads and create a, generate a lot of inspiration. That, so this is where I'm connecting now, where, where that weekly energy sort of came in, where I was just like, what is happening here? Um... If we look at this collectively as like not our own personal houses, like where Gemini is in our house, but collectively I think it'll sort of end up being in the 10th house, which is the, the house of ambition. So um, we could use this opportunity to think about what do we want to accomplish in two weeks time? What do we want to accomplish in six weeks, six months time when the full moon in Gemini is happening in... November, I think, between October and November. A more specific question you could ask yourself is what mark do I want to leave on the world? What mark do I want to have on the world? Um, you can get ahead professionally. Who are you speaking to these days? Oh, that's a good question. Who are you speaking to these days? Do they see you as an expert? Do you want to help people with your work? Hmm. If you've earned it, take the credit. Plot your next career move. And you know what's interesting about this 
new moon is that it's happening during the Mercury retrograde and Mercury and Gemini are connected. They're linked. I keep, keep forgetting who's the ruler of her. Is Gemini, Gemini the ruler of Mercury or is Mercury the ruler of Gemini? I feel like it's that way. I think I feel like it's that way. Mercury retrograde has been intense. I've lost a Bluetooth speaker to this Mercury retrograde already. It's not playing around. <laughs> um, there's some other things happening astrologically on this day of the new moon. I recommend you guys go check out the weekly energy video to really get the full scope of it. Um, because there's like a lot of karma, karmic energy, karmic retribution. So yeah, it's good just to be aware of like, where has your mind been? Where is your mind? Where is my mind? Reel it back in. But yeah, it is definitely a time marked by having lots of ideas, lots of inspiration. At the same time, we're left feeling sort of stuck with this information, with these ideas and inspiration. You know? Um, and I'm not saying that a Mercury retrograde is solely responsible for that but there may be things going on in your life that feel like okay this is a good idea but we're not ready to action it yet like things just don't feel ready so things are going to be percolating for quite some time and I would just say to you when you think about setting your for this for the new moon you know your new two week and six month um goals it's okay to aim high but also just be realistic about what kind of changes you want to make in your life. If you need help uh, figuring out which house Gemini is uh, ruling for you, just drop a comment. You can send me your natal chart and I'll just I'll point it out. Let's get into our reading. If there's any other messages I didn't get to that want to show up, now's your time. Now's your chance. The energy is gaining momentum. Yes, it is. The waxing moon. The energy is gaining momentum. And the waning moon. Interesting. <laughs> what do you need to release? Okay. So this is about um, one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. We're waxing, we're waning. Wax on, wax off. Um, just a gentle reminder that as we move forward, we're also releasing things along the way. This is about, yeah, adjustments are required, the third quarter moon. So look, we've got all moon phase cards happening here. This could be indicative to me that this is uh, maybe a reading for somebody who feels like they're just going through the motions and not much is really changing. It's because there's still adjustments needing to be made um, in general and sometimes it's not even in our control but that there's things in life that are only really happening on divine timing so best you could do is work with the energy set some intentions and release any expectation of an outcome but do the work do the work but don't don't expect, you know, total resolve or something. Because they're, they're, this feels like it's in the middle of something. So I'm, it's like, I'm sorry, did I interrupt? <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, you did. I'm, I'm in the middle of something here. And I, yeah, that's definitely the energy of this right here. Okay, let's get into our reading. Victory! Okay. And this card showed up in the ener weekly energy too. We have victory showing up here. So let's dig into more what that, what that, what that is. This is about um, the recognition of something. Now, maybe it's wanting to say like, okay, you're been doing the motions, but can you, even while you're like not near the end, can you still celebrate everything you've you've gotten to so far? Celebrate every little freaking thing. Do it. Do it. Um, sacando el jugo. It's a phrase I learned, just like sucking the juice. Like 
taking the juice out of life, like really taking all, all of the sweet nectar that it has to offer. That is the flavor maybe of this, um, the six of wands. Let's keep going. We have the four of swords, the four of pentacles. Oh boy. The page of swords. The oh boy was for the double fours. I was just studying fours earlier today. Go figure. Um, we have the page of swords, the queen of pentacles, the star, hope, temperance. Yeah. The eight of wands, the queen of wands, and the Six of Swords. Wow. Okay, so this is, if you're resonating with this reading so far, I'm not going to repeat, but like everything about the moon phase cards and like feeling like stuck in, in the motions, your medicine here is to celebrate something no matter how small because look, I'm seeing the outcome here we have the Page of Swords, Temperance, and the Six of Swords. The Page of Swords is the hero of the tarot. He's armed with the knowledge to like slay the dragon, so to speak, to take on the tower. The moment of, um, you know, chaos or destruction or crisis. The Page of Swords knows how to deal with crisis. It doesn't mean that they're the most experienced and have the that that like amount of wisdom but they know just enough to know when to time out there's like temperance there's a lesson in in patience so the page of swords like wants to move forward wants to um and you know in other decks he is sort of like with this massive sword charging into you know battle or something but not here and this one, he's like, he looks like he's carrying like a, I don't know, a weightlifting bar and is about to do some squats. Like, see how he's not going anywhere. There's a lesson here about like really honoring when we're, we are going through the motions, when we feel like we're not progressing. This is all just an illusion and you are, things are happening in the background. The, the validation of that is the six of swords. This is literally the trans a transition card. This is a moving card, whether you're physically moving, literally moving across the sea or not, there is movement. There is movement here, even though you in your mind and what you perceive mentally, again, swords are mental. Sword is also air. Gemini is air. This is the new moon Gemini reading. Okay. So the tower isn't showing up here, but we have the hero who deals with the tower and the star that comes right after, which is like this feeling of hope. There is this, um, a message wanting to come in about rejuvenating your hope in something there. You might get information or a message that is uplifting. Um, I see the queen of wands here. She's representative of the best friend. So maybe this is somebody who, you know, has got your back. Maybe you've been in a situation where you have been just like holding on for dear life onto um, the things that you've built your life upon so far. Like the, whatever, whatever time value structures exist in your life that you've been leaning on, um, they're about to see some sort of like renovation or rejuvenation. Um, this could be by another person. This could also be you, but I feel like it's another person. I feel like that there's other people in your life here because again, the six of wands is also about public recognition. So if you yourself are in the situation where you can't really see how well you're doing or how well, you know, how much has had to go, go into how much you put into, um, yourself, your life, whatever circumstance, whatever it is you're doing to get to where you are now, if you can't see it, other people can definitely see it. You know how that is sometimes where we need just to be reminded of how awesome we are. Uh, this would be a good time to allow those messages to come in and land on, um, land on you, land on your heart. We also have the queen of pentacles. 
you know, she lives the manifestation. It's like you are living the life that you want. Like in some ways, there's always some angle you can find about your life where you have the thing that you want. Like you've come to, I'm not, not feeling like the finished point, but just observing how something that you've worked for has worked for you. So you can congratulate yourself that something has worked. Okay. Now, on the coattails of this realization, like whenever you do come to it, um, don't hold fast, you know, you're, you're, hold, you're, you're wanting to hold on to this maybe like I'll put it this way. The realization comes suddenly and suddenly is a fast moving energy when something happens suddenly. The page of swords deals with the tower which is sudden change. That's maybe why his energy is showing up here. When something happens suddenly for us, even if it is just a realization and not a real thing, we want to respond. I think our, our bodies are designed to want to respond also suddenly. How do we respond to being incredibly inspired? How do we respond to any situation that makes us feel extremely anything? We want to respond also immediately or suddenly. And I feel like that's the thing to look out for maybe this week. The lesson is to um, be more balanced in how you see and perceive versus how we feel. Um, and then what action are you taking from that? I don't see any action being taken on this table besides inviting in gratitude and inviting in a perception of our lives in which, you know, things are good. Things are good and we know that we have what it takes. And we know that because we got here, because we got here, because this is where we are. Wishing you the best of luck for this new moon in Gemini. Definitely, definitely write down like a six month goal that you have for yourself. Um, if you need help figuring out where Gemini, which house Gemini rules in your chart, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll point it out to you. Um, and then you can set yourself a little goal based on, you know, what, what is being illuminated for you during this time. Okay. Uh, make sure you go check out the Mercury Retrograde video. That is a new thing with a new deck that I just made. It's a you pick card. You, you pick, 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 choose your own adventure card, whatever. What else can I say? I think that's, I think I'll leave it there. I think I'll leave it there because that was like a really good message. So uh, noted. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.